Hi, this is Simone from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Today I'm sharing with you information about our free Calendly API demo file. What is it and how does it work? Well, Calendly is a subscription-based online scheduling platform. There are several subscription plans available with the basic one being free. Users can manage event types, schedule events, workflows, and routing. Users then create a booking page to share their availability so others can view and schedule an appointment. So the big question is why integrate Calendly to a Claris FileMaker Pro solution? Calendly is useful for setting up appointment availability and allowing others to schedule based on available time slots, but it might not show the whole picture. And if I have spent the time to create, or pay to have one created, a custom Claris FileMaker Pro solution, more than likely it will include all my calendar events in one place, or at least that is the goal. So by integrating Calendly into a solution, you are able to provide the whole picture, so to speak. As a developer, I've always said that if I don't know how to do something, it's because I haven't had to do it yet. But if I can see an example of how it is done, I'm golden. That is exactly what we have here with the Calendly API demo file. It gives you enough to get started and points you in the right direction for more. Claris FileMaker Pro caters to all skill levels, but in my opinion, API integration requires an intermediate to advanced skill level. I've added a use case scenario into our core CRM Pro demo. For more information on our core CRM product, I will include the link below. For example, you may want to combine your other calendar items with the scheduled events from Calendly. You or your Claris FileMaker Pro developer can add a button to fetch the Calendly data from the API. You could potentially erase all the current data in your solution or update your previously pulled scheduled events. That is totally up to you and your workflow can be customized to best suit your needs. Once the Calendly scheduled events are in your solution, you can view them. Another possibility would be to add fields you may want to track more information for prep work for your upcoming meeting. In this case, you'd want to update the Calendly events in your solution and match them with a UUID. Now let's take a look at the demo file. In order to query Calendly, you will need a Calendly account and an API attached to it. If you don't know your Calendly token or haven't generated one yet, Clicking the Calendly API Access Token button will take you to a page on Calendly where you can generate one once you've logged into your account. You will be asked to name your token. You'll create it and then copy it and then paste it into the API key field. Once you have the API key pasted into the field, you will need to perform a one-time setup of querying your unique Calendly user URI, which will allow you to make calls to your Calendly scheduled events. Click the button Get User ID to gather that information, which will automatically be pasted into the field. You can also see the full results here. You're going to want to set your time zone. This isn't required, and we only put the US time zones in the demo file. The value list is easily customizable, You'll need to know the UTC offsets for the time zone that you're adding. If this field is left blank, it will default to the UTC time. Once you have the API key, the user URI, and the time zone set, click the List Events button. This will use the API to communicate directly with the Calendly server in order to retrieve all of the active scheduled events from your Calendly account. They will be displayed in chronological order in the portal list. Pending events will not be shown, as this will only query the events that have been accepted by guests. In this demonstration, you will be given the start and end timestamp, as well as the name of the event. As you can see from the results field, there is more information available, including things like location and event type. But for the purposes of this demonstration, we are keeping this simple. If you are a developer, I've made this next section just for you but end users and business owners are encouraged to stick around. There are two tables in the demo file. The main table acts as the driver table. It will store things like the API key, the user ID and the time zones, 
plus the results we get back from the API. The events table contains the data for each scheduled event. This is the data that appears in the portal. The two tables are linked in the relationships graph with a simple Cartesian join. This will display all the returned events in the portal on our layout. One other piece of the puzzle that makes the data flow more efficient is a simple custom function. This function replaces the return timestamp generated by the API into a Claris FileMaker Pro timestamp. So, when the script writes the data to the tables, the data is in the format that makes sense in FileMaker. You will want to make sure you import this custom function into your solution first. Now let's take a deeper look at the scripts that deliver the Calendly integration. The first script is Get Current User. This script runs when the Get User ID button is used which is what fills in the Calendly user ID field. We have to run this script before we can start pulling events from Calendly. This script is calling a Calendly endpoint for the current user. When we receive a payload of information, we will put one of the JSON elements into the Calendly user ID field, as long as we don't get an error, which is handled here. The second script is Get Active Scheduled Events. This script is more complex and has more steps associated with it. For demonstration purposes, the first thing we will do in this script is clear out the events table. We are not matching any events from any previously pulled events and then updating. We are just keeping it simple. After we delete all the events, we are going to set the URL current field and set the offset for the time zone. By default, Calendly will only return 20 active scheduled events at a time per API call. So if there are more than 20 active scheduled events in Calendly, you're going to have to call the API multiple times. This is what this loop represents. As we loop through each batch, we are going to loop through each event in the batch and in the events table, create a record based on the results from the Calendly API call. After looping through all the events, we're going to check to see if there is another page or batch that we need to grab. If there is, we will do it all over again. Otherwise, we will exit the loop here. This is only one use of the Calendly API. If you want to view all the options available, clicking on the API Docs button will take you to the Calendly's online API documentation. There you will find all the endpoints that are available to you. The My Calendly button will take you to the Calendly account page. This is where you will manage all of your Calendly events. Now that I've gotten you all excited about incorporating Calendly API with your Claris FileMaker Pro solution, you are probably wondering where to find it. Go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Once there, click on Courses. From there, you can use the search field or click on Free. You will find the FileMaker features and free resources here. This is where you can sign up for free. If API integration is new to you, you can also sign up for API Fundamentals for FileMaker Developers course. Productive computing can be hired for custom FileMaker development and consultation or FileMaker application integration. We also have a monthly Claris FileMaker maintenance support program. All of the information regarding these different services can be found on our website, ProductiveComputing.com. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. For more Claris and FileMaker training tips, go ahead and subscribe. And for more information, go to ProductiveComputing.com.